they have uh, spent all year investigating the president and uh, have turned up with no evidence, none. Even House Republicans have said, have said, the evidence does not exist. To my friend in the back who just yelled at, which is incredibly inappropriate, uh, but House Republicans have said that there doesn't, there doesn't, it doesn't exist. And that was White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday, slamming the impeachment inquiry into President Biden. The president making his first public comment since the announcement of an inquiry last night. He said this, they want to impeach me because they want to shut down the government. The House GOP conference is planning a closed-door meeting this morning uh, where key committee chairmen will lay out their case into the Biden family's influence peddling. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Aaron Bean. He's a member of the Small Business, Transportation and Infrastructure and Education and Workforce Committees. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. I, I want to get into some of the work you're doing on these committees, but first, where are you on this impeachment inquiry? What can you tell us in terms of the damning evidence that you've seen? Uh, Maria, a very good morning. What a treat to be with you. Uh, it's very alarming, and for KJP to say there's no evidence, uh, a contraire, there is lots of evidence, and the lines and the dots uh, continue to be connected. Uh, today, there is a little behind the scenes closed door meeting of those three superstars that have connected so many dots uh, Smith, Comer, Jordan, and uh, they're going to be charged to continue to connect those dots. And uh, it's every week, it seems like there's another dot connected, and it's just alarming. Uh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, but what are you going to do in terms of your uh, conference, your membership? We know that there are some Republican congressmen who have said, Said, it's you're not there yet. Look, we've got a graphic right here. These are the Republicans who have publicly stated that they do not support an impeachment inquiry. That's Ken Buck of Colorado, Dave Joyce of Ohio, Don Bacon of Nebraska, Brian Fitzpatrick of Pennsylvania, and Mike Lawler of New York. What do they see that you don't? Well, you could also put uh, 200 other congressmen that says, yes, let's go forward with this uh, impeachment inquiry. And inquiry is the best of both worlds because it says, uh, let's take the next step. Let's take the next step and see, because there is, there's so much smoke, Maria, so much smoke. You don't have 20 shell companies, uh, except for a, a reason to hide and, uh, and play the shell game. You don't have over 5,000, 5,400 fake emails where the president himself is talking about uh, Hunter's business dealings when he said what over and over again. I've never talked to uh, my son about the Biden uh, about the Biden crime family uh, uh, dealing. So uh, there is so much smoke here, Maria, and this is a, uh, a great step by Kevin McCarthy to say let's uh, let's go and see where this evidence leads, and that's what we're going to do. So one of your members told me he wants to see Joe Biden's bank records. Are you going to be able to get that? Are you going to be able to get the bank records that would show an actual deposit of $5 million from the Burisma guy who said $5 million to one Biden, $5 million to another Biden? That's how we keep ourselves protected, according to a whistleblower testimony. What specifically does this inquiry enable you to get that you haven't gotten yet? Well, it, can, it narrows the focus to high crimes and misdemeanors. And Maria, uh, taking money from a foreign adversary like communist China, Burisma, Ukraine, uh, taking money and doing their work, uh, turns out that's a high crime and misdemeanor. So that's what we want to do. We want to focus our efforts to see uh, what's really here. I can tell you this. I can tell you they have stonewalled uh, each and every turn, uh, have denied everything until that dot is connected. And they go, oh, and they try to explain it. So uh, come clean. Biden family, show yeah. us your records if there's nothing to see here. But you just saw the president's uh, press secretary blow up when people have legitimate questions mm. of why the uh, president has uh, uh, suddenly uh, has become a multi, multi-millionaire uh, being uh, on a government salary. Well, I mean, look, the president and the White House have begun to shape this story the way they want. You just heard what the president said. Uh, you're doing this because you want to see a government shutdown. So how are you going to balance deepening this probe, getting the, more, the evidence that you need to communicate it to the American people, while also keeping the government funded? You only have nine nine working days left before the government runs out of money. The GOP couldn't even get the votes yesterday to start a debate on their own defense spending bill. Can you tell us where this stands? Uh, we've got a lot of work to do, Maria. First of all, the, the president's still circling the wagons. They're stonewalling at every turn. So, yes, we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do without any help from the Biden White House. So uh, I know this. I know that if we don't make changes to how we spend money, our 
our budget, our economy, our way of life is going to implode. Your guests right before me have painted the picture. Uh, the American people are suffering uh, financially with inflation, with gas prices. So we've got to do something different, and it starts with getting spending under control. So we're going to do something different, yeah. Maria. Uh, so stay tuned as we go to work today. I'd like to know about these appropriations bills. I've got some notes here about what appears to be some conservative wins uh, on the Department of Defense, fully funds the DOD request of $826 billion, uh, invests in countering China, confronting an increasingly woke Pentagon. Uh, on the homeland, you've got uh, the, the appropriations bill fully funding the border security, consistent with H.R. 2, uh, mandating enforcement policies consistent with H.R. 2, defunding programs that encourage illegal immigration, uh, returning spending to fiscal year 16 levels. Are you going to be able to get these appropriations bills across the finish line? Let's hope so, Maria. Add in border security, Maria. Add in border security because okay. uh, uh, that's where that's where it's going to come. It's going to come at the negotiation table to get spending under control, but also secure our border. It's destroying us. We had yeah. testimony in a, in a workforce committee yesterday. Uh, wages are getting destroyed by these immigrants, these illegals coming to our country. So uh, we've got lots of work to do, Maria. Stay tuned. Thank well, you for reporting some of the good stuff that we're getting done yeah, on Capitol Hill. I've got I've got some of your uh, conservative wins here for sure, and we just want to see if these uh, mandates in terms of the enforcement policies uh, actually materialize. Now, look, you also have the Small Business Committee today marking up two bills aimed at recovering stolen pandemic money. It was meant for small business, Congressman. How did the money get out of the realm of going to small business and where did it go? Maria, we got the report card of how much fraud was involved in COVID relief money. It's over 20 percent. Over wow. one in five loans were fraudulent. I've got a bill that says we want our money back. It's the We Want Our Money Back Act. Uh, we're not going to let it go. You stole our money. These fraudsters, these fraudsters that that committed acts of crime. They stole the taxpayer money. Our bill says we're not going to let it go. We're not going to say uh, if you stole under 100 grand, we're just going to let it go as the administration has uh, has uh, contemplated. Yeah. We're going after everybody that stole money from the from the taxpayers. Wow. Well, I'm here with former CIA uh, leader uh, Mike Baker. Jump in, Mike. Yeah, uh, Congressman, thank you for your time. And very quickly, touching on that subject of recovering the stolen money, the, the fraudulent money that went missing. I mean, can you give me an idea? Because I think there's there's usually some skepticism that Washington can keep track of funds uh, and and recover missing funds. How are you going to do that? I mean, g give me a layman's version of how practically that's going to happen. Well, we're working with the uh, office of the inspector general who gave us a report to the committee that said just rife with fraud. So working with him. Uh, we're going to have forensic scientists that go through uh, comb money. It's not going to be easy because the backlog is so great. Uh, hundreds of thousands, over 90,000 uh, inquiries that came in on the hotline that gave uh, that gave evidence that uh, there is fraud. So we've got work to do. It's not going to be easy, but we just don't want to let it go. We had uh, speculation that there was so much fraud that we might just let some of it go and let it pass. And that's what uh, I want to say no. Are I want to say no. Are we going to no. see more mandates now to get vaccines now that we're talking about new variants? The election variant is coming? Uh, that's a no. That is mm. absolute no. Absolutely not, Maria. All right, Congressman. We're going to be watching your work. We appreciate your time this morning, sir. Thank you.